loving yourself loving yourself loving yourself it is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor and hate yourself hello viewers hello friends you're welcome to another episode of loving yourself and this is episode 40 wow loving yourself series we've been on for 40 good weeks is god not amazing i want to use this medium to welcome you to a brand new week welcome you to a brand new month and guess what this october and october is my best month so it means a lot to me so i want to welcome you to my month and i want to welcome you to loving yourself episode 40 god has been faithful and all our viewers all our friends all our family all those who have been helping us out who are praying for us and supporting us i want to say a big thank you we love you and we celebrate you lovingly and all those who are going to join for today i say thank you very much but um before we go i'll leave you with this song from nk music before we go on and it says no matter the weather I love you forever, no matter the weather, you and me forever, and I go to follow you, they go, I go to follow you, they go, no matter the weather, and can loves you forever. Glory to God. You're special. You're distinct. When you were born, you were not born empty. There is something on your inside, and that's what makes you beautiful. That's what makes you distinct. That's what makes you extraordinary. So don't forget who you are. You're special in your way. So once more, welcome to Loving Yourself series. And today, God has something wonderful for us. So I want us to pray as we dedicate this series today into the hands of God. So wherever you're on the sound of my voice, just bow down your heads and let's pray. Father, we worship you. We adore you because you're faithful. We thank you, Lord, for all the goodness, for your mercies that endure it forever. Thank you for being a good, good father. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for all the testimonies and loving yourself series. Thank you for the breakthrough. Thank you for the encounter. Thank you for the wealth of wisdom. We have come to say thank you. Thank you for this month of October. Thank you for everything you've taught us. Father, today we ask, Lord, that you open the eyes of our understanding to hidden truths in your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, oh God, teach us your words today. Help us, Lord, to understand everything you have for us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Loving yourself, loving yourself, loving yourself. It is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor and hate yourself. Why? Because you can't give what you don't have. Before you be able to love yourself, it has to follow a process. You have to love God. Then God teaches you how to love yourself, how to appreciate yourself, how to celebrate yourself. Then you now love your neighbor. Welcome to Loving Yourself, episode 40. Glory to God. We are going straight to what we have for today. So we started um, a series called Chapter 13, and we've been on for it. And Chapter 13 tells us what the concept of love is. It was taken from First Corinthians Chapter 13, and that chapter is called the Love Chapter. It tells us what love is, what love is not. And today we are going on further to what God has been teaching us. Please, if you miss any episode, we always leave leave it here on Facebook. It's just a favor that we don't go over and over again. Just after now, you go to the previous episode every Monday and you will be blessed. I tell you the truth. God has been amazing. So for today, we are talking about something very, very beautiful. And it is called a love that does not dishonor others. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 8, it says, If I speak in the tongues of men, of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a glanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, the Bible says, I am nothing, absolutely nothing. Say, so if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, the Bible says, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. So everything you do is just useless if you don't have love. Then the Bible tells us the characteristics of love. It says, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is it does not dishonor others, it does not it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, 
it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, there will cease. Where there are tongues, there will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will definitely pass away. But love, love never fails. Glory to God. So this is chapter 13, and this, I what I just read is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 8. In your time, you can go over it over again. Love never fails. Love is so amazing. And the truth is that God said in the word that God is is love say beloved let us love one another for love is of god and anyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god he that loveth not knoweth not god that means if you don't love you don't even know god because god is love glory to god so Loving Yourself series, our aim is to teach us how to, one, love God, two, love yourself, three, love your neighbor. Praise the Lord. Don't forget I said that you can't give what you don't have. So for you to be able to love the right way, you must first of all acknowledge and understand the concept of love. You must experience it. Then you can now be able to love and give out love. Glory to God. So the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 22, it's 37 to 40. We are loving yourself was taken from. That's our chapter. That's where everything we talk is taken from. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40. It says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Then thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. It said, This is the first and the great commandment. Glory to God. Simply put, God is love and in loving yourself in chapter 13 we are dealing on the agape love there are types of love but in this chapter 13 series that talks about first Corinthians chapter 13 everything we'll be talking about is the agape love which is the sacrificial unconditional love of god glory to god so from first Corinthians 13 i gave us 16 characteristics of love and we've been dealing every week on them and today we are on the sixth that says love does not dishonor others but for emphasis i'm going to just run down the 16 characteristics i put here derived from first Corinthians 13 so that will be on the same page love is patient love is what kind number three love does not envy love does not boast love is not proud number six which we are dealing on today love does not dishonor others glory to god god is going to be teaching us how to honor others what honor is love does not dishonor others seven love is not self-seeking love is not easily angered love keeps no record of wrongs love does not delight in evil love rejoices with the truth love always protects love always trusts love always hopes love always perseveres love never fails number 16. so today's episode and the, today's series of loving yourself episode 40 we are dealing on a love that does not dishonor others glory to god if you're watching just give us an energy of love 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 a love that does not dishonor others glory to god and our emphasis today will be on honor 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 if you must possess a love that does not dishonor others then you must understand the concept of honor you must know what honor is so that you'll be able to give it out the right way a lot of people do things with that understanding and the bible say um knowledge is um, wisdom is profitable to direct so if and my people perish for lack of what knowledge ignorance cannot um um ignorance cannot uh, how will i put it now if you're ignorant, it will not make you not to be punished. If you are ignorant and you do the wrong thing, you will still be punished. So God said, my people are perish. My people perish, rather, for lack of knowledge. So today, for us to be able to understand what it means to love without dishonoring others, to be able to know and, and to have love that does not dishonor, dishonor others, we must first of all understand what honor is. We must understand how we can honor others. We must understand and take examples by biblical examples of people that honored others this thing called honor is there any benefit in it so as we go further god is going to be exposing his words to us and i tell you the truth if you stay to the end ah you will be blessed in the mighty name of jesus amen 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 so what is honor i went through my research to get what honor is and i want to share with us Honor is defined as showing esteem for one deserving of respect, attention, or obedience. Honor is a concept that encompasses respect, 
esteem and recognition of the worth or value of a person, an action or an idea. It involves treating someone or something with high regard, dignity and integrity. So honor places um, someone higher. It gives you that, it makes you to treat someone with high regard. It makes you to understand what a person is and to be able to handle that person in the right way. Honor is integrity. Honor can manifest in various ways such as showing respect, keeping one's word, demonstrating integrity and acknowledging the virtues or achievements of others. When you're able to see how far someone has gone and you put yourself together to acknowledge it and to appreciate it, you put your mind, when you're speaking in your words, you're able to calm down and talk well to someone. You're placing honor on that person. Honor is, is often associated with a moral and ethical principle and is considered a virtue in many cultural and be, um, belief systems. Generally, honor is the act of showing respect, dignity, and recognition to someone or something, often based on their worth, virtue, or achievement. It embodies principles of integrity and moral respect. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 2, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father, emphasis on honor. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment with a promise so god has already told us um told us how to honor told us to honor our parents glory to god honor is very very important honor is very very important if you must climb the ladder if you must get to stadium if you must get to that point where god wants you to get to then you must not look down on honor you must not mash people down you must be able to look at your leaders and honor them you must be able to honor god you must be able to honor your parents you will be able to honor leadership you must be able to honor others i tell people treat people better when you encounter people in your life journey no one is an island be able to show respect be able to show dignity in your words in your action let them know that you honor them and you see when you honor people i tell you the truth there's a lot of benefits let me go down to what i have honor brings blessing elevation promotion but this honor brings curses and loss of position you can't profess love without honor if you must love, then we must learn how to honor one another. You cannot say you love someone without honoring that person. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, love does not dishonor others. For you to be able to love someone, you must understand how to honor. You must understand how to keep boundaries. You must understand when, when to say something and when to keep quiet. You must understand when, how to place people. In the hierarchy and where they belong you must understand all these concepts so that you can demonstrate love the right way glory to god i want to give us some quotes on honor okay today i just have to say honor is the moral and ethnical code that guides our action demonstrating our true character the moral and the ethnical code that guides our actions they, 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 they say a proverb said action speaks louder than words so when you act people can simply know what goes on within you you don't need to talk every time but when you act people know if you honor someone or or not just by your bodily language someone is talking to you and you're like giving um you're giving body, bodily um language it can tell if you place honor on the person or not if someone is talking to you and looking somewhere so honor Honor is the moral and ethnical code that guides our action, demonstrating our true character. H. L. Merchan said, "Honor is simply the morality of superior men." So, if you want to go up there, you want to be superior, you must honor. You must learn honor. Now, I want to give us three major persons in your life, in our life, that we must honor. There are three major persons. There are a lot of people which honor, but I want to put it into a category. Three major people that you must not fail to honor in this life. Number one. God you must honor God if you must show that you love God then it must show in the way you honor him there is no there is no love without honor it 
is a foundational error for you to profess love to God and you dishonor God. And when you talk about dishonor, it shows in your action. I just said that earlier. In the way you, you, you behave, in the way you will act to matters that has to do with God. It shows whether you love him, it shows whether you honor him. So, three major persons you must honor in your life is number one, God. Number two, your parents. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 2, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long on earth so that means if you want long life we see those days in our society our youths are dying like 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 i like i don't know what to call it because most of them they have failed to honor their parents most youths are on the streets they don't want to listen they feel they now know it they feel they are not big boys and big girls so they look at their parents in the village and they're like ah oh, what does this one feel like what do, what does he have to offer maybe because the old man is just there and you feel he's no more educated than you and you just look at him like a nobody forgetting to know that that was a person you came to that forgetting to know that some of you your parents are selling a cover but it was a school fees your school fees are what made you was bought from that business but now you've become something and you've got your car and you've dishonored them you feel that anything they tell you does not matter i tell you if you want to live long on earth the bible says you must honor your father and honor your mothers then number three the next category of people you need to honor i call it others one god two parents then three others 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 that means you can talk about the leadership you can talk about your pastors you can talk about those in your offices those who are in high position how you treat others you talk about those you meet every day others others you must learn how to honor if you must love glory to god so we we'll talk about God now, honoring God. Number one, honor God. How can you honor God? Matthew chapter 1, verse 6 to 8 says, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? God was the one asking here. He said, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I, God, be your father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despised my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? Where is my honor? God is saying, where is my honor? Where is my honor? If I be your father, where is my honor? If you look around the way people live their life, you'll see that they don't honor God. Now, God was even talking about the priest. If you look around, even in a church setting, the way we behave to the things of faith, the things that pertain to God, it just shows that we don't honor him. God is calling us. Here we serve by hearing the sound of my voice right now. He said, where is my honor? Where do you place me? Where do you place me when it comes to God? I went to church the other day and I saw people, your phone just ring and you leave the church to go and answer a man. A man that may sleep tomorrow will not wake up. You're in the house of God. But you don't give God that honor. You feel that, that your phone call is better than God. You're there in church and someone just calls you that that contract has clicked and you leave the presence of God and you're wanting to go and meet a, con a contract or to go and keep an appointment. What if in the midst of the world you, you get an accident? The contract will still continue. But because we have not understood the concept of honor and who God is God is calling us today my sons and my daughter if I be your father where is my honor so even when you go to church when you do things that pertain to God please give God honor do you know that even the way you live your life should honor God the way you carry yourself should honor God but the Bible says our body is a temple of the most high God we are gods we are created in his image so everything about you should honor him glory to God so that's talking about God Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 says honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. God was talking about me. Whatever comes to you, honor me. Exodus 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So that you may live long. It's just like Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 says the same thing. Romans 12 10 says, Be devoted one to another. Honor one another above yourself. So now I go down. Some people say, oh, I honor God. I don't know how to honor God. So then how do you honor God? I want to give you four ways 
that you can honor God. There are other ways, but I want to give you four ways. You look at to these ways and try to honor. Number one, by prayers. When you wake up in the morning, do you pray? Or you just rush out, brush your teeth, and you're off to work? When you wake up in the morning, do you take time to say, Lord, I thank you because you are the one that made me to see this bright day? Do you thank the giver of your love? Do you give him honor by giving him the praise, by making you for making you to see a brand new day? Do you pray? Engaging in prayer and medication allows individuals to connect with God, seek guidance, and offer gratitude, which is a form of honoring his presence. Some people I see even in church, they are praying, you're walking about. Prayer is communication with God. You're talking with your maker. You're letting him know that he's the most important person in your life. You're asking him for guidance. When you want to do that business, when you want to enter into that venture, do you ask God for guidance? Do you call him into your matter? Or you just go and feel like see, nothing else, nothing matters? Prayer is one way to show God that you honor him. Number two, praise and worship. Do you thank God when God has done something good for you? When you're in expectation, you need things for you. Do you praise his name? Thanksgiving shows you love God. Thanksgiving shows you honor God. And you are grateful for what he has done for you. You are grateful for what he is yet to do. You are grateful for what he will do. Do you thank God for the achievements? Do you thank God for the good times, for the bad times? Or you are just there to complain? Thank you, Dawi Obari, for tuning in. God bless you. I celebrate you. You can leave an emoji, emoji or something about love. Thank you. I appreciate you and all those in now. Do you praise God for how far he has brought you? Imagine when you were, you were still like a baby. Now you are grown up. Imagine how he has kept you. Those who started the race before you and or with you, they are not there. But he has kept you. Do you make him to know that he is important? The third way we can honor God is living a virtuous life. Honoring God is often associated with living a life of integrity, compassion, and moral values. Treating others with kindness and love is seen as a way to honor God's teaching. So when you begin to practice the teachings in the Bible and what God has told you, love your neighbors, love yourself, you go out, you begin to give things to people, you begin to place people above, you begin to honor people, it shows that you honor God. Then the fourth one which I really like is paying your tithes. Paying your tithes. Paying your tithes shows you trust God with your finances and you honor him by involving him in your financial life. It also shows love and obedience to his commandment. Malachi 3 verse 10. The Bible says, Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now. That's one of the places in the Bible that God has given you a mandate to prove him. He said, prove me now. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour down my blessing, that there will not be room for you. So we thought, a lot of you, you're having sicknesses and diseases. You, you, you ain't much, but you don't see where it's going because you've not been able to honor God with your finances. You try your best. You honor God with your mouth, with everything you have. But your money is a no-go area. If I'm going to pay your tithe, you pay when it's convenient to you. The Bible says, bring all to my storehouse. When you bring your tithe to God, you show God that you honor him. You show God that God is money. You gave it to me. This money, you know what? Money is like it's, it's like an exchange to your to your time, to your life. Because you you you, you spend so much time to, to invest and you got that money. So when you bring that money to God first, what you're trying to say is, Lord, I hand this over to you. I trust you with my finances. I trust you because I know you are the one that gave me this money. The Bible says it is the Lord that gave it to you was power to create wealth. So when you bring your tithe to him, you're just giving him the honor. Ah, God will not come down from heaven and come and be taking your money. Well, do, imagine the money. It's even 10%. God that created the whole world. He asked him for 10%. What is 10%? If you have 100,000, for example, 10% is 10,000 naira. And you have 19 to yourself. It's God not amazing. If you have 1,000, 10% is just 100 naira. 100 naira. And some people find it so, so, so difficult. Let me tell you. If you say, ah, the money is not enough. Until I have plenty money, then I will pay my tithe. Ah, there's something my dad told us when growing up. He said, yes, it's 100 naira. You start to pay your tithe as a child. If you cannot give 100 10 naira tight when you have 100 naira you cannot give 100 naira tight when you have 1000 naira you cannot give um 1,000 naira tight when you have 10,000 naira. But that's it, my children. Even when God blesses you with millions, you will feel it is too big. Because the money is increasing, the tight increase. It's small, but a tight of um the tight of one million is hundred thousand. So people will say, Ha, me, I will not go and give God hundred thousand. Uh, it's not God that is it. These church people will just eat my money. Let me tell you. God said, bring it into my storehouse that there may be what? Meat. Then God gave you a free check. He said, 
Prove me now. It is the Lord that will rebuke the devourers for your sake. When when arm robbers or arm, arm robbers rather want to come, it is God that will stand at the gate and rebuke them. He will check your work and say, This person has paid my tithe. This person has a financial record in heaven. So nobody can steal his money. When that your business wants to close, it is God that restores. When he has said, Prove me, you just carry your tithe. Say, Lord, I've been faithful. I have come to prove you according to your word. So when you give your tithe, you are honoring God. You are showing him that he is a force in your life. He is the one in charge of your finances. So, that is also another way to honor God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, I'm talking about that and I'll tell you, are there benefits of honoring God? As I said earlier, paying tithe as an act of obedience to God's commandment and a form of honoring God with their financial resources. When you pay tithe, you're doing that in obedience to God God's commandment and also as a form of honoring God for your financial resources. Now, what are the benefits of honoring God? What are the benefits? I'll just give us two benefits here. Honoring God in a biblical context is considered a virtuous act with spiritual benefits. Number one, blessings and favor. There's a song by uh, Eben, it says, Favor, favor, blessing, blessing. It's my portion. It's my portion. So when you bless, when you um, honor God with your tithes or with your prayers and everything, when you honor God, the benefits you have is blessings and favor. And the Bible tells us in Malachi 3 verse 10 that we should bring our tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat. Then prove me. I will open the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing. Now, when my bishop was talking the other day in the church, he said, we're talking about a blessing. It is that blessing that makes you wish. That blessing, when God pours his blessing upon you, is the blessing that provides the money. It's the blessing that provides the contrast. It's the blessing that provides everything you need. And whatsoever God gives, he protects. So the blessing there, when God puts on you his blessing, the blessing makes it rich. The blessing adds no sorrow. The blessing sustains your resources. The blessing, you just see yourself, for example, you're earning 50,000. And you know, you know that it can never be enough with the increase of things and with the economy. But because the blessing of God is upon you, you calculate what you spend in the month and it's more than 50,000. God just begins to open doors for you. Things that normally you struggle to handle. You just see someone, you enter the the, the, the taxi has already don't bother i've paid for you your 200 naira would have gone but your person has done you see your children going to school but like don't bother i've taken care of their school fees you just see yourself encountering favors everywhere those that used to be closed are now open because there is a blessing that is what comes when you honor god i pray for you listening to me today that as you keep on honoring god god will pour his blessing upon you in the mighty name of jesus amen it is mentioned that by bringing tithes and offerings to God, he gives us his blessings and his favor. Blessings and favor are what comes out as benefits when we honor God. God begins to throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing. Honoring God is seen as a way to invite his favor into your life. Number two, internal rewards. In the New Testament, we discuss the idea of internal rewards for those who honor and follow God's commandments. In Matthew 6, verse 19 to 20, it suggested that treasures are stored in heaven for those who prioritize honoring God and living a righteous life. So when you honor God, you begin to heap up treasures in heaven. God begins to open his heavens, his floodgates, and begins to bless you. Glory to God. So that's just one of the benefits that you can see when you obey and honor God through your tithe, through your prayers, through your worship, through your thanksgiving. These are some of the blessings you can get. Then about the second group of people I said that you should honor are your parents, our parents, our parents, both your biological parents or your foster parents, those who took care of you. Honor them. Ephesians 6, 1 to 2 say, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. God promises to bless you. God promises to make your life prosperous. God promises to give you a long life. And when God gives you a long life, it will not be a life of suffering. It will not be a life of shame. It will not be a life of disgrace. It's going to be a life of blessing, a life of favor, a life of enjoyment. And all this can be possible when you honor your parents. How do we love and honor our parents? You cannot say you love your parents without honoring them. 
You cannot say you love your parents and you just leave them as one forget, for, for, forgotten thing in the village. I use the word thing. Because the way some people treat their parents. I have seen people that their mom is close to them even when they bring them for a function. But you cannot even recognize the person. The person or the lady is in front, the mom is at the back. They're like, I see my mother. What? You cannot touch your parents up. Let it be that you gave to them and they do not accept to win. They cannot see the reflection on them. You don't send provisions. If you don't have, it's another thing. But I'm talking about people that have their way to do. There's a movie I watched the other day that this man was so poor. The father was so poor. He couldn't go to the university. He couldn't go. The dad had to sell his land in the village. He said, this is my son. Ah, you must graduate. You must become a medical doctor. They were so poor. After watching that movie, I wept in my soul. The dad sold his land, sold everything. And this man went to the village, went to school, became something good, and started making good money. They were putting it side by side. The dad was still there climbing in Roko Tree, doing pan wine tapping. Meanwhile, this man was in his mansion in the city enjoying. He has forgotten that it was the land that his father sold and he had a money that made him who he was. The father kept on calling, sending messages. The, the son was not, a, a, was not listening to it. He kept on treating the father anyhow. Up to the time of his marriage, he did not even recognize the father. One of those days, someone came from the city and met this man. Like, ah, why are you here suffering? Where your son is one of the big boys in town. The person that gave the, he didn't say, Are you serious? He doesn't even know. He thought something not good with his son. He had been emailing and no respect. His friend now gave him the contact of his boy. This father now entered and went to the city to visit his son. Oh my God. Oh God. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the boy was having a good party on that day. He has invited guests and all these dignitaries, politicians, and high class people to his party. Because he did not take care of his father, the father put on one tattered cloth like that. And when the father got to the gate, they did not allow his father to enter his gate. The father said, I am looking for, let me which name will I look at call now. The father called his son's name. And they said, the person the guest says, Sir, we don't know you, get out. He said, That is my son. They kept on pushing the man. He said, That is my son. Because the son's symbol was there, you will know. He said, this person you're seeing here, this party, this boy, ready for this, uh, ready for this banner. Now my son, now my son, now me trainer. They kept on pushing me out. Luckily, the son was passing. And the son cited his father. The father said, the father called him his village name. Hey, call his village name. The son was so embarrassed. The son had to, to, just looked at him and took his guest inside. Now went to the gate. Carried the father to the backyard. I said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Who asked you to come here? See how you look. The father would not say, I am your father. I am the one that trained you. I sold my land so that you can become something better and come and take care of us. I have caught, I have tried, you have rejected me. The son said, take, 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 take this 1,000 and I'll be what? Go back to the village. Go back to the village. He said, I will not enter my son's house. I will not see what is happening as they are still talking. The fiancé came out and said, hello, honey. Who is this man that is talking to you? And he said, um, don't bother. It's just someone from the village that needs help. I saw the father in tears. But I said, he called him his native name. Me. Someone in the village that needs help. I trained you. And they were talking. They said, get up, get up. And that was how the man went back to the village, crying in tears. The son, the son, oh God, this is a high level of dishonor. Dishonor in its highest state. A lot of you have even done worse. Parents that gave birth to you, they are there crying in the village. When it's time for their burial now, you will go and you will just put um, this thing, all the canopies, and you put shut down, knock down, whatever. You will shut down the building, shut down the town, because you want to show your name. But those parents are there. You don't honor them. The Bible says it will never be well with you. You don't pick their cause. You don't send them anything for upkeeps. It will never be well with you. That's what God says. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long and you, you're beginning to ask why is it that i'm sick i do this and not to come i don't have to i don't have this you have dishonored you have dishonored and it was never well for that boy when the story ended i don't have time to go through it so our parents are more important people one one most important apart from god after god that we must honor it is a commandment from god now Abandoning your parents is a high level of dishonor. And 1 Corinthians 13 tells us, love does not dishonor. 
you cannot say you love your parents and you dishonor them and you reject them or you treat them as trash god forbid any words that you receive that will enter into your head that will make you not to look at those who sat and washed my infant head please it is error what four ways to honor our parents respect and obedience show respect and obedience to your parents guidance and rules when they tell you something obey especially while you're living under their care listen to their advice and make an effort to follow it second one express gratitude i'm giving us the ways that we can honor our parents regularly express gratitude and appreciation for the love care and sacrifices your parents have made for you a simple thank you thank you can go a long way thank you it's not easy some of you are still having your own children right now and you begin to appreciate what it means to be a mother what it means to be a father try to appreciate them number three support and care as your parents age be there to support and care for them just as they did for you this may involve helping with household, household choice ensuring their well-being or providing emotional support i'm just reading it i've said a lot call your parents check on them how are you doing someone was telling me the other day of a man that went to the village for a function and the village he went to the village where the mom and the parents were staying and he finished everything for money tonight he could not go to the house the family house to see his father or his mother when it's about going he now called the father on the car and said oh dad i've been around in the village and about going now and uh, sorry the time is spent i would have come to see you but uh, just let me call you to tell you that i was around you did well thank you but do you know that if you have gone even if it was five minutes they saw your face they held your hands and they hugged you it would have made them more happier you came and you're calling your father eh? la, 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 la. If you can, show them love, physically also. Support. Maintain open communication. Keep open lines of communication with your parents. Share your life with them. Listen to their concern and involve them in your decisions when appropriate. This helps strengthen the bond between you and demonstrate your respect for their wisdom. Let me give you some scriptures about honoring your parents. Exodus 20, 12, say, honor your father and your mother so that your days, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Ephesians 6, 2 to 3, say, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Proverbs 1, 8 to 9, say, listen, my son, to your father's instruction and to not turn do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garlic to grace your head and a shame to adore your neck. These are some of the passages about honoring your father, honoring your mother. Glory to God. I want to give us some examples of people in the Bible that honor their parents. People in the Bible. Isaac. In the Old Testament, Isaac honored his father Abraham by willingly participating in the sacrificial act planned by God. He trusted his father's obedience to God's command, even when he was in the intended sacrifice. This act of obedience and trust demonstrated deep honor for his father's faith. If some of us were like Isaac, hey, 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 father will tie your hands, carry you, you will keep quiet. Young boys have run away. They will scamp my own head. Then you don't know. The little lad asks, Father, where is the sacrifice? Where is the animal for the sacrifice? Say, God will provide. You still followed your father. Isaac followed his father. His father carried him, put him on the firewood, was about carrying the knife, and Isaac is still there. <laughs> Some of us see that we have run away. If it's me, I don't run. It takes a high level of honor and respect. Isaac showed, he said, I trust in my father. I trust in the God of my father, that my father cannot kill me. It is high level of honor that for Isaac not to run away, for Isaac to stay there. We see a lot of young people today, even when they tell you, come and do something in the house, you've come, you've go away. He said, let me, you wake up. He said, let me do this. You don't have honor. Even in the churches, they tell you to do something, your father in the Lord or whatever, you're complaining. 
You're giving 32 and 33 and have reasons why you must not do that. In fact, when you're even coming, you have issues, you have recorded issues. If they tell me why did I not do that, I give them one excuse, another excuse, another excuse. You don't have honor. You don't have honor. Once you have honor, everything you want to say is rubbish. You will do what you were asked to do. He tattoo. I pray as I talk to you, I talk to myself, that God will give us the grace to love and not dishonor in the mighty name of Jesus. Another good example is Esther. Esther. Esther is a woman of honor. She honored her uncle, who was her fa foster father, Mordecai. She honored him in a way that it resulted to blessing. Everything Mordecai told Esther, she listened and obeyed his tattoo. When he told her when she got to the, queen, uh, no, the land of the king, he said, do not disclose your identity. Don't tell anybody where you were. It was, if it was some of us, when you see all those girls, all those Chakara girls coming and they are talking, you know, I am from this place, you know, we are Tush, you know, oh, can I see your path, please? Ah, uh, when my father came from the U.S., he got me this path. Esther would have come to her and say, eh, we too, we know we are the chosen one of Israel. We are the ones that God has come. In fact, you know, God is going to destroy all of you. We are the ones that God, to are we making mouths. That is what we do. We do. Eh? Babes, girls of this time, talk, 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 talk. What they ask you and what they don't ask you. Some of you have forgotten the upbringing your parents gave to you. Because you came to the city, nobody understands you. I was telling people in the church the other day. Some of you, you don't even know who you are. You have so, 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 you, you are looking at one person that you call your mentor or whatever, and they don't even know yourself because your face does not look like you. Your body does not look like you. Your dressing does not look like you. you you're, you're just a carbon copy of another person. If they come now and they are looking for you, they will pass you. They will not even know you. That's why some people, blessings have passed them because their identity is just closed. Have you forgotten the teachings of your parents? Because you're in another land. Esther did not forget everything Mordecai has told her. When she got there, the same way she listened, honored, and obeyed Mordecai, that was how she obeyed the, the, the leader of the virgins. She obeyed everything. If you must be there on top, you must learn how to honor. You must learn how to honor. And honor brings blessing, as I said. This honor brings disgrace. Honor took Esther to become the queen. Be why this honor made Vasti to become to be kicked out of the kingdom. She lost her position. She lost her status. Meanwhile, Esther, because of honor, she was upgraded. An orphan, a nobody. One of my sons said, You shame me from nobody to somebody, from glory to glory, from nobody to somebody, from glory to glory. Esther was changed from nobody to somebody. That's what honor does. And today I speak into your life this week. Your status is changing in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessing will erupt over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Elevation, promotion. Esther was promoted. And the other Chingom girls, sorry for using the word Chingom. The other, you know, you know, when the leader was telling them what to do, they were there par parading themselves. They were nobody. Most of them could be the children of prime ministers, senators, whatever. But honor made Esther to become the best. In the book of Esther, you see that Esther honored Mordecai by listening and obeying him and not exposing her identity, and she was exalted. Benefits of honoring our parents. Number one, long life and well-being. The fifth commandment in the Bible found in Exodus 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Honoring parents is associated with the promise of a long and a well-lived life, suggesting that the art of respect brings blessing and protection. Number two benefit, fulfillment of God's promise. Fulfillment of God's command. Fulfillment of God's command. Honoring one's parents aligns with the commandments and the teachings of God. Obedience to God's instruction often leads to a sense of fulfillment and alignment with his will, which can bring spiritual and moral benefits. By honoring your parents, individuals demonstrate their commitment to following God's commandment and a promised blessing and a sense of living in accordance with divine principles. Because of time, I will not go further. But I charge you today, as I charge myself, honor God 
honor your parents and the third people here we should honor it others i put it others others means your church leaders your leaders in, the, in nigeria in your country in the economy people everybody around you i tell even people even someone that is lower than you oh no don't treat people don't treat people as trash don't treat them as if they don't matter Honoring others means showing respect, recognition, and appreciation from their intrinsic worth and their contribution, contributions or qualities. It involves treating people with kindness, empathy, and fairness. Honoring, honoring others includes respect, listening, empathy, appreciation, fairness, and support. Four ways that you can honor others. Honoring others can be expressed in these four ways. Number one, respect. Treat others with respect by acknowledging their opinions, their feelings, and the boundaries. Show courtesy, courtesy, and consideration in your interaction. When you're dealing with people, show courtesy. Be able to put yourself, don't treat people like trash. Don't treat them as if they don't matter. Active listening. Practice active listening by giving full attention when someone is speaking. Some people, they are talking to you, you're looking at somewhere, you're uh, looking at your... Uh, someone did that to me recently, I almost slapped that person, or even a smaller person. I almost wanted to go, but like, if I don't teach this younger younger person the lesson, person would understand, person would think that what he's doing is right. I'll be talking to you, you're pressing your phone, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? They're talking to you, you're pressing your phone, you're saying, hey, ma, I want to go and do this, someone is calling me. Lack of honor. I say, calm down. I had to tell the young girl, it happened in the function I went to. I had to tell the young girl, I said, hey, hey, calm down. Calm down, you're walking too fast. He got to the point, I said, how old are you? And she said, um, I'm 20 something. I said, 20 something. You've got a long way to go. She's such a long way to go. I looked at her, uh, uh, I typed my age. 20 something, I knew what I was doing at that age. And I told her, I said, hey, in fact, her age self added two years. To her age, I was already married. Not pride, but to the glory of God. When you honor, there are things that will, when you just when you dishonor, there are things that will not even work for you. You will chase people from you, from yourself, even men, even suitors, because of the way you we are. We saw be talking to you. I'm trying to pass a very serious message to her, and she's there type putting her phone. She gone girls. Hey, my mama, ma, please, my ma, please, I'll come back later. I have something to do. Ta, who born you? I have to tell her, calm down. I said, this thing I want to tell you now, it may either be good for you now, but if it is not important now, you go and store it somewhere for the future. But one day, you will sit down and you remember what I'm telling you. I told her, you're becoming too familiar with your environment. Because I knew how she was when she came the first time. You're becoming too familiar. Calm down. So that you don't begin to hurt people without even knowing. Oh no. We're talking about listening. Active listening. What is active listening by giving full attention when someone is speaking? It shows that you honor the less person, whether it is someone higher than you or a child. If a child comes to me, for example, and the child is trying to tell me what's wrong with me, mommy, something beats my leg, and mommy, I have a headache, mommy, my body is hot, and I'm pressing my phone, I say, hey, so what are you saying now? Your body is hot, and what is wrong with me? I'm meant to drop that for saying, hello, dear, you okay? You head hurts, you lack your leg, you do the this, and need to attend to that child. That means I have placed honor on that child. People come with their situations, with their life things to you, and they are telling you something, but you're absent-minded. That means you don't honor them. Gratitude. Expressing appreciation and gratitude for the contribution, help, or kindness that others offer you shows that you honor them. A simple thank you can go a long way. Support. Offering assistance, encouragement. Offering assistance, encouragement can go a long way to show that you honor. Supporting others in times of difficulties or challenges is a way to honor them and to show that you care about their well-being. I want to give us three biblical examples of people that honor others. I'm not going to go into more details because of my time. There is a woman in the Bible called Abigail. The Bible almost called her husband a fool because of the way the husband treated David when David came to them. And David told his boys and his men that they were going to finish him. But this woman, Abigail, came and honored David. 
she treated him so well that David just forgot and forgave what the husband did. There are some men that eh, I don't even know how to call them. That the way that we behave, you ask yourself if this man is sane. Sorry to the men, men, men folks. And I begin to wonder why we such a beautiful wife, beautiful woman called Abigail. Where will she find herself with such a man like that? David wanted to clear the whole, whole, whole descendant of that man. Wanted to finish him. But Abigail showed him honor. She came with her beauty, with her words, with her treatment. And she calmed, the, calmed, calmed David down. Honor leads to blessing. Honor leads to promotion, elevation. But this honor leads to disgrace, shame, and death. Abigail, as described in 1 Samuel 25, is known for her wisdom and her art of honoring David by adverting a potential disastrous conflict between him and her husband, Nabal. She showed respect and offered provision to David and his men, preventing bloodshed. Another person that showed honor in the Bible is Queen Esther. In the book of Esther, Esther honored her people, the Jews, by taking great risks to approach King Jesus on their behalf. She demonstrated courage, selflessness, and honor for the people of the Jews, the people of Israel. She said, if I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. She took the risk to honor God's people. She remembered where she came from. An ordinary orphan. How God has brought that us far. Some of you, when God lifts you up, you forget where you came from. You forget the place where you came from. You forget the village where you were. You forget when once upon a time you were drinking Gary. Me, I love Gary. But you're drinking it because you know you don't have anything. I can drink Gary now with, with or not, whatever. Not because that's my major meal. But some of you, that was the only thing you have. You forgot how God brought you out. Now, God, God has placed you, you're now a queen, your head is chucking you, you cannot relate with people. Esther did not forget her people. She honored God's people. She honored the God. When you honor God's people, you're honoring the God behind the people. And God kept on lifting her up. Another example is Joseph. In the New Testament, Joseph, the earthly, in the New Testament, Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, talking about Joseph the capital now, he is an example of a man who honored Mary. Talking about how he can honor others. He honored Mary and accepted her miraculous pregnancy. He did so by being obedient in God's will and marrying Mary, even though the situation was beyond his understanding. He did not disgrace her. When the angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, this is my own, he just obeyed and honored her. He wanted to, even when the angel has not even spoken to him, he said he will just take her away. He will not dishonor her. He will just hide, hide her and take her away from the sin. Some of you will disgrace that woman. Hey, you became pregnant without me. Honor others. If people fall into mess and mistake, don't feel as if you're, you're, you're yourself, you're, you've never made any mistake in your life. Calm down and treat matter well. Praise the Lord. So Joseph showed honor to Mary. He did not disgrace her. And by honoring Mary, by still taking her in, showed that he honored God. Because it was God that gave her. It was God that commanded him. Take her as your wife. For that thing in her, that child in her is a holy child. So everything we've talked about tells us how to honor others. Tells us how to have wisdom, courage, selflessness, and obedience to God's guidance. Now, what are the benefits of love and honor to others. What are the benefits of a love that does not, dis does not disorder? Number one, God's approval. Honoring and showing respect to others reflects the love and kindness advocated in the Bible in 1 Peter 2 17. It says, Show proper respect to everyone, love the family of believers, fear God, honor the emperors. These things tell us how to honor God. Honor, honoring God, honoring God, honoring others gives us God's words approval. Number two, mutual edification. Honoring others contributes to the well-being of the entire community of believers. In Romans 12, 10, it says, Be devoted one to, one to another in love. Honor one another above yourself. When you honor others, it can lead to mutual 
mutual edification, a stronger relationship, and a more harmonious and supportive Christian community. Glory to God. It's number three, benefits of love and honor. It builds stronger relationship. Honoring others fosters trust and respect, leading to stronger and healthier relationships. Number four, it gives improved communication. I'm just, I've said about most of this thing. I'm just trying to bring it out into categories. Honoring others encourages open and constructive communication, reducing conflicts and misunderstanding. The last one is enhanced reputation. Demonstrating honor can boost your reputation and how others perceive both about you, both personally and professionally. Increase self-esteem. When you honor others, you, you're acting honorably. It can boost your own self-esteem and your words as it reflects a commitment to both ethnical and moral values. Number you have personal growth. Honoring others makes you to grow. It often involves personal growth and development as it requires empathy, understanding, and selflessness. Then increase opportunity. I have that. A lot of us, doors have been closed against you because you have dishonored people. Now you want things in future, but that door is closed because you dishonor. No, when you honor people in professional setting, honoring commitment and respecting colleagues can lead to imp increased opportunity and career success. You want doors to open for you. You want to have success in your careers, in wherever you find yourself practice honor with love honor leads to promotion elevation and blessing from god and man why dishonor leads to failure dishonor leads to failure it leads to failure it leads to destruction glory to god it leads to demotion it leads to disgrace it leads to failure now, I want to give you the result of dishonor. I've been talking about honor, honor, honor. If you dishonor, what are the results? Dishonor is a disease that kills slowly and disgrace openly. It starts from the heart and projects disgrace outwardly. There are a lot of results of dishonor. But I want to first of all tell you some people in the Bible that dishonored others. In the book of Esther, Vasti lost her possession, her position because she dishonored her husband the story of vasty dishonoring king ahasuerus was found is found in the book of esther chapter 1 10 to 12. it says in on the seventh day when king zazis was in high spirits from wine he commanded that he commanded the seven eunuchs who served him to bring before him queen vasty wearing her royal crown in order to display her beauty but she refused to come Vasti's refusal to obey the king's command to display herself before the guests at the banquet if is, is, is said to be an act of dishonor. This led to her removal from the position as a queen. This event set the stage for the subsequent events for Esther reign. Many people have lost their position, they have lost their seat of authority, they have lost their place because of dishonor. I pray for you today that this honor will not have a good part of you in the mighty name of Jesus. This honor will not lead to your downfall. You will embrace honor and you will become the star to your generation in the mighty name of Jesus. The second person we have is Gehazi. Gehazi dishonored Elijah, his master, and received cost instead of blessing. He became a leper because he lied to his master. He did not honor his master. Gehazi dishonored action was this is described in the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 42 and 5, verse 27. He ran after Naaman. He began to tell Naaman that my, my master had a party, my master needed lying. He dishonored his master and he received the cause. Gehazi was a servant of the prophet Elijah when Naaman, a commander of the Zerah army, came to Elijah for healing from leprosy. Elijah miraculously cured him. However, Gehazi, motivated by greed and dishonesty, later followed Naaman and lied about Elijah, needing money and clothing. Can you imagine? He accepted the gifts from Naaman, including silver and garment, deceitfully. Elijah, being a prophet of the Lord, was aware of Gehazi's action, comforted him, and Gehazi even still lied. He dishonored the name of the Lord, and with this result to him getting Naaman's leprosy now afflicting Gehazi and all his descendants. I pray for you today that you will not bring cause upon your descendants unborn in the mighty name of Jesus. Gehazi's story teaches us how to honor, how to let go of this honesty, greed, 
how not to dishonor our master and those who are above us another story in the acts acts 5 they want to level is the story of ananias and sapphira ananias and sapphira's story serves as a striking example of those who are deceitful those who can lie to the man of god the bible say god pronounced judgment upon them instantaneously they died at the spot they dishonored their leader and they died at the spot this immediate judgment demonstrate the importance of honesty and integrity in your relationship with god and others lying they died at the spot they died at the spot they came with good things but they saw the possession and the light dishonoring the man of god how many of you have dishonored people in your life and it has brought you shame and disgrace it has brought you where they call right now you, you you don't even understand yourself but no matter what you have done no matter how far you have gone no matter the cost that you have no matter what you have lost have you lost your authority have you lost your position a lot of you have left your husband's house today and you're asked there because you dishonored your husband yes i know that you have gone through a lot but this cause for us and for those who are going through a lot in their husband's house i pray that god gives you the grace to stay honor in the mighty name of jesus there are better days ahead a lot of you have lost your position even in the career in the business world because you could not listen to what your leader was telling you you feel you not too much i pray for you that god restore everything that you have lost as you come down to him no matter how far you have gone no matter the disgrace no matter the way the cool, no matter the shame the good news is there is grace available in the house the good news is jesus is here jesus is yet to restore all the years that the canker one the, the palmer one and the caterpillar has stolen from you jesus is here to restore your honor and your dignity jesus is here to make you new again jesus is here to make you who he wants you to be jesus is here to teach you how to love how to love to give you the love that does not dishonor jesus is here to make your life a meaning so if you are here no matter what you have done jesus wants to remove the garment of shame and disgrace from you and put on you the garment of honor and dignity all you need is a decision to accept his love so that he can fill you enough fill you with enough love so that you can honor others so if you're here and you have not said yes to him this time that god wants you to give him your heart to give him your soul to give him your mind he wants to restore back your dignity he wants you to come back to that position of being a queen we are the bride of the lord queen esther was made a queen Vasti was thrown out have you been thrown out like Vasti? there is restoration on the house jesus wants to shower you with his love he wants to have your position been taken by someone else he has another position for you have they taken your position have they taken it because you dishonored people and your business is crying right now that contract you would have gotten it but because of your level of dishonor you've been thrown as a trash jesus want to teach you the way he want to give you your heart leave every year my boy just put your hand on your chest and i'll say this prayer with you say, lord jesus i come to you today i come because i need you to save me i need you to remove my name from the book of death and put my name in the book of life I hand everything to you. I hand my shame. I hand my disgrace. I take, oh God, your, I take, oh God, your grace. I take your love. In exchange, oh God, for every shame and every disgrace. Come into my life and make me clean. Come, Lord, and make me clean. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, commit your people into your hands. I pray, oh God, they say, whosoever comes to me, you will not take away. You will not chase away. I pray that you accept them into your kingdom, Lord. Remove their name from the book of death and put their name in the book of life. Father, Lord, keep them safe in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Congratulations. If you've said this prayer, you are saved. And the Bible says, there will be joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over 99 that needs no repentance. I want to tell you, for those tuning in now, congratulations. Thank you for joining. Mary, Mar Mary Lynn Brown, thank you. Thank you, Paul, for joining. And everyone, I can call your name. Please, uh, we're almost running up, but you can watch this video later. I'll leave it here on Facebook. 
I know that you have gone through a lot, but God has restored you if you've said this prayer right now. Don't stay in your house. Look for a church, a Bible-believing church around you and fellowship. I represent Shama Christian Ministry right here in Port Harcourt. You mustn't come to my church, but if you want to, please DM me. I will give you direction. I would love to see you. Thank you for listening to us right now today, and God bless you. And for all those who have stayed up to now, I want to pray for you. We're going to pray our prayer today for honor. We say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, put in me the garments of honor. Give me the grace to be able to honor people. Help me, oh God, to have the love that does not dishonor. Just as you said in 1 Corinthians 13, that love does not dishonor others. Give me the grace, Lord, even when the tension is high, to be able to love others, not to dishonor. Give me the grace to honor you. Give me the grace to honor my parents. Give me the grace to honor others. So that your blessings and your elevation and your promotion can rest upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I commit my hearers, my viewers into your hands today. All those who have been participating and all those who will watch after now. I ask that your week is blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you keep on keeping them in your word. I pray, oh God, that whatever that lay, they lay their hands to do this October shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep them, Lord. St strengthen them in your word. No weapon fashion against them shall prosper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Loving yourself, loving yourself, loving yourself. It is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor and hate yourself. Thank you for joining us once again. i see you next week Monday for another interesting and motivational, inspiring episode of Loving Yourself. That will be episode 41. Please share this video, like this video, tell someone that needs to hear that God is love. I celebrate you lovingly. Thank you for always supporting us. God bless you. No matter the weather. I love you forever. Loving yourself, loving yourself, loving yourself. I'm signing out. God bless you. See you next week.